Let's focus in here on the end of the screwdriver, the handle part, and think about the forces that are involved. Here's the center, and this is the radius. We'll call it R. And out here it is at the edge of the wheel section, at the edge of the handle, the outer edge, that the force is applied. So let's imagine we twist this as if we're screwing a screw in. So we're going to be putting a downward force here, at the same time an upward force here, And you should be able to see that those two forces together will produce a turning force, what we really call a torque. But for now, just think of it as those two forces. And those two forces are actually the friction between your hand and the screw screwdriver. You could really picture it as a bunch of forces all around the rim, wherever your hand is grabbing it. But it's going to be exerting a torque, a turning force. But for now, we'll just focus on these two over here on the left and right side. Because when you look at this, you can think of this as a lever. You can imagine the fulcrum being right here in the middle, and this is the force pulling down. And this distance here, the radius, determines how much mechanical advantage we get out of the lever. The larger the radius here, the larger the radius of the wheel, the more mechanical advantage we would have. So now let's look down here at the tip of the screwdriver, where the screw would be screwed in, and we can imagine completing the circle here. There will be another radius down here, the radius of the tip, and a force applied here. This would be an output force and one there. So as we apply input forces on this end, we get output forces down on this end. Now suppose this radius here at the wheel part, the large, the handle part, was five times the radius down here at the tip of the screwdriver. If that was the case, then a point on the rim here, on the edge of the handle, would move around in a circle, and it would move five times the distance that a point at the tip of the screwdriver on the edge of the axle part would move. If the radius is five times as great, then the distance moved around the rim will be five times as great. So a point here on the rim of the axle is only going to move one-fifth the distance, but it will move with five times as much force. And in this particular case, the way we've described it, the mechanical advantage would be five. You could say it gives us a five-to-one mechanical advantage or just a mechanical advantage of five.